pleasant evening to be here. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Dawn Stewart Lykin. I'm the owner of the Dawn Consultant Company and director of Lykin's Funeral Home. I will be sharing this event this evening. Indeed, it's a great honor for me to have the opportunity to welcome this assembly of distinguished persons and pay sectors from various fields in the business sector this evening to the launch of the fifth annual Business Guide Magazine produced by the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It is proof of your belief in the investment of Guyana and the work of the chambers. I would like first to make mention of our special guest, the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Samuel Hines, the ministers of the government, members of parliament, members of the diplomatic corps, private sector leaders. Indeed, a memorable day when an exceptional magazine is launched for the fifth year. What an expired idea in 2009, a magazine of business sector investors, their families and friends. A publication like this aims to inform, instruct, guide, and integrate information for current and future investors can only contribute immensely to civil society. Guyana is a country of promise. It's a land blessed. And until we are able to take ownership of it, harness their strengths, talk more to each other rather than outsiders, open our doors to investment and trade, making the continual development of Guyana human capital a priority, we would not be able to fully realize our potentials. For although the issues confronting us today as people are global, we must rise to the challenge of global investment, and we must join in hands to make our business sector a sector where persons desire to invest. Coming together and producing such a distinguished investor's guide as a unified group provides us with a platform to share best practices, principles, and foster partnership, allowing our members to grow stronger and become leading advocates in their individual industries. Today, we're expanding our investments in the future through research and education, and we will enjoy its reward generations to come. It is impossible to appreciate the significance of our gathering today without reflecting on what investment in Guyana means. According to the world's most successful investor of the 20th century, Warren Buffett, we should think long term and be patient. No matter how great the talent or efforts, some things just take time. You can't produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. Money like babies are part of nature. It doesn't grow overnight. You can benefit from Guyana's growth only if you invest for long term and not panic on seeing short term difficulties. The magazine promises to continue to provide much information to current and prospective investors. As we proceed with the events of this evening, the sequence of the evenings will start with the President's representative remarks, the launch of the fifth edition of the business magazine, the dinner, introduction of the guest speaker, guest speakers, and a vote of thanks. Please, re please be reminded to put your cell phones on vibrate or silence to avoid interruption during the proceedings. At this time, I now would like to present to you one of the persons who has the tremendous work of guiding the chamber's future as, uh, is the, directing, the director of Dorega's Business Enterprise and country coordinator of Kaysen Environmental Service and is an ardent contributor to the private sector development. Please help me to welcome no other than the current Vice President, Senior Vice President, Mr. Vishnu Duerga. Madam Chair, 
Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Members of Parliament, Chairman of the Private Sector Commission, Mr. Ramesh Basad, Chairman of the CAIC, Mr. Ramesh Duku, other private sector leaders, Ms. Sophie Makonen, Country Representative, IADB, Members of the B Diplomatic Corps, Members of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Business Guyana adver Advertisers, Members of the Media, our valued guests, good evening. I would like to, on behalf of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry, welcome you again to the launch of the fifth edition of our Business Guyana magazine. And I do hope that you enjoy this evening's proceedings. I must express regrets on behalf of our president, Mr. Lance Hines, for his unavoidable absence this evening due to overseas travel and for Mr. Clinton Orling, the magazine's editor-in-chief, due to exigent circumstances. I will endeavor to include the views of my two colleagues into my remarks this evening. The Joshua Chamber of Commerce and Industry represents the voice of the business community and strives to advocate policies, stimulate trade and investment, connect businesses, sustain economic growth, and expand member opportunities with the aim of contributing to a stable and sustainable economic and social environment in Guyana, where businesses such as yours can prosper. Our focus this year will include the continued development of an entrepreneurship and innovation culture, leading to more rapid SME growth and expansion. We will be actively seeking the development of alternative investment mechanisms geared at financing startups and SMEs. You as members are encouraged to take part in the many upcoming activities relevant to your interest. We also encourage all other companies to join the Georgetown Chamber and to enjoy the numerous membership benefits. Your contribution will aid in strengthening the level of service and representation the Chamber can offer. Our team this year is to capture global opportunity. We have experienced encouraging economic metrics over the recent years and continued improvement in trade negotiations, transportation, and technology, coupled with both national and international investment drivers, provide a myriad of opportunities for even greater economic growth. The onus is on us, investors, to identify, investigate, and invest in these opportunities. We must, however, be cognizant that to play on the global stage, we need to play by the global rules. We therefore expect an enabling environment, legal or otherwise, that allows the private sector, and by extent, the nation, to capitalize on these global opportunities. The Business Guyana magazine, first published in 2010, and every year since, was and still is one of the best ways we can promote Guyana as an attractive investment destination. 5,000 copies of the magazine are published annually and distributed globally through our embassies and high commissions, through foreign missions in Guyana, through international trade shows, and through the Chamber's extensive domestic and international network of stakeholders. Our magazine continues to be the highest income earner for the Chamber, providing much needed resources which are applied towards fulfilling the Chamber's mandate of overall private sector development. We express our sincerest gratitude to all our contributors and advertisers whose input continue to make this initiative a great success. Last year, the magazine underwent a major metamorphosis as we significantly updated the publication's design, feel, style, and layout. In that same spirit, this year, we continue to tinker with a broader concept to keep the magazine's layout fresh and attractive to re readers. While ensuring the content quality remains high and provides a substantial wealth of information to our readers. You will notice a more prevalent use of color, a lighter background that makes reading easier. There are familiar for me features such as the Ram and McCree investment supplement, 
offering a comprehensive overview of Guyana's major commercial regulations. We also brought back the facts on Guyana supplement to provide a quick synopsis of the country's main characteristics. Our Q&A segment this year features Mr. Ramesh Pasad, our current Private Sector Commission Chairman. With the aim of facilitating the path for investors to navigate through the process of investing in Guyana, we have included a graphical 12-step investors roadmap, illustrating the agencies which would be the first point of contact and culminating with the ways in which products and services reach the intended market. Similarly, in the Advantage Guyana piece, we have succinctly outlined a number of sectors where high potential opportunities for investors exist in Guyana's economy. Sometimes we forget that there, there are many entrepreneurs working towards making the world a better place for all through their volunteer and social work. In this edition, we are pleased to feature Ms. Annette Arjun Martins and her admirable work in social entrepreneurship. In closing, I want to thank the Business Guyana Magazine Editor-in-Chief, Mr. Clinton Orling, for his significant contribution towards the continued success of our magazine. The magazine's designer, Ms. Sita Sugrim of Kriti, and the committed team of professionals at our Chamber Secretariat for delivering once again a high-quality creation that will provide critical information for anyone considering Guyana as an investment destination. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Darlene, for that splendid introduction. Please help me invite the Honorable Prime Minister Samuel Hines to the podium for his remarks. Dear person, Dr. Don Stewart, our Senior Vice President, Mr. Vishnu Durga, Ms. Sophia Sophie McConnell, our resident representative of the IDB, uh, president of the Private Sector Commission, Mr. Ramesh Prasad, and president of the CAIC, Mr. Ramesh Duku, my old colleagues, Mr. Lance Carberry, private sector representatives. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'd like to mention in particular all the many young persons, maybe two generations younger than myself that I am seeing here this evening. I think you have me speaking to you for a few minutes because I think my our chairperson said that I couldn't have dinner without doing some singing. I didn't pay any uh, <laughs> subscription to get here. But I'm happy for the opportunity to address you and to say just a few things that we in Guyana have been doing well. We've had growth of 5% or so since 2005, and that is a good thing. But maybe we should live, lift our expectations some. Some of us would be hearing that China has slowed down, and they're only looking at 7.5%. And I think many people may say that they have been maybe since the 1950s, been doing something like 10% growth a year, averaging over, over some 60 years. And that gives you a doubling of your GDP every seven years. So if you work it out, they've had about nine doublings. And if you put two to the ninth, you get a number that goes up two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. So that today, in terms of material numbers, uh, the GDP is like 500 times what it was in 1950, say. So maybe we, I'd like to challenge, particularly our young people, to let us lift our eyes and think of moving to the next level, moving from 5% GDP growth a year to numbers like 10%. And if you think about the periods uh, in China when they got going, they had little 
or nothing, very little or, or nothing. I say this because I've heard the Vice President speak, and I know many people speak about enabling environment, reduce taxes, this, that, the other. But that is what growth is all about, to generate those, those sorts of situations, to make the contributions to the national uh, budget, the consolidated fund, from which the, we could have the investments in education and infrastructure that people need. I think the emphasis should be on an even playing field and expedited processing, so things happen uh, much more quickly. I think that is where we should be putting our focus. I wouldn't want to, ch to, to steal any of the thunder that our guest speaker from the IDB may say, but I hope to maybe I re-emphasize some things she would say that the IDB has recently put out a s small book, a thin book, asking the question, is the Caribbean suffering from sclerosis? Uh, more or less, I reinterpret it as, are we kind of stuck? Because the fact is that we have not been, the fact is, let me put it the other is that we may be doing well enough, but there are other small economies that are doing significantly better and over much longer periods than we have we have been. So there are challenges out there. Mr. Bo Tiwari talked to some of the uh, maybe change in attitudes at the lunch not so long ago, some of the things that we should take in, in mind that maybe should allow us, would allow us to get on to higher levels of growth rate and to, and to be there for decades and not maybe just five years, but for 50 years of steady growth and development. Well, my generation may not have done so well. We can always plead to the circumstances, winning independence and so on, but I look forward and I challenge the younger people that we have to get on to that kind of growth trajectory 10% a year over the next 50 years so that we could have maybe a many-fold increase in our GDP or per capita uh, GDP. And that's my wishes for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. I know that noting the large attendance of young persons here tonight, I have no doubt that they will take up the challenge that you have so proposed to them just because the numbers that are here of young persons tonight will surely be um, able to take that challenge and develop Guyana to quite very heights that me and you would probably not be around to see. But however, I do believe that they will continue the matter and get on with the business of um, developing Guyana to its greatest heights. At this time, I would like to have the unveiling of the magazine. Like many of you, I recognize the opportunity to hear from an exceptional professional at such an event, extremely invaluable. Ms. McConnell, as the representative of the IBD, will speak to us on issues of private sector. Ms. McKinnon current country is the current country representative for the IBD in Guyana. Previously, she has served as the Chief of Operations in Haiti, where she's played a clear role in re-establishing the country's office following the January 2010 earthquake and overseeing the execution of an ambitious portfolio to support the country's reconstruction, a significant contribution considering the IBD is one of the biggest donors of the country. 
She played a key role in the delivery of social programs in Haiti during that period. Ms. McConan worked in the education and economic development of Ethiopia and Haiti with Save the Children of the USA and worked as an education consultant for different bilateral organizations. Ms. McKinnon holds a master's degree in education from the University of Montreal. Prepare to be informed and more importantly equipped to understand the role of the country representative. I don't want to waste any more time. So please give me an energetic welcome to our speaker of the evening, Ms. McKenna. Honorable uh, Prime Minister, members of parliament, senior vice president of GCCI, members of the diplomatic corps, esteemed members of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm truly, truly pleased to be here this evening with you, and I'm most honored to have been invited to share some observations and comments with you on this August occasion of launching with you your fifth edition of Trade and Investment for Guyana Magazine. I was asked to address the issue of how to foster a sustainable environment for promoting private sector development and international investment. This is a vast and complex topic to expound upon, and for the sake of brevity, I would like to limit my intervention and make just a few points that hopefully will provoke thought and engagement. Firstly, I would like to say, and I think this is very important, the, governor, the Guyanese private sector must be recognized for their laudable role in Guyana in Guyana achieving eight consecutive years of positive growth. I think the Prime Minister mentioned that, and that is something not to be forgotten. Through your risk, your diligence, your hard work, and your perseverance in the face of sometimes uncertainties, you generated output, provided valuable services, created jobs, and in the process, of course, we should not forget, increase government tax revenues. Too often we tend to dwell on the main constraints that an entrepreneur face and on the weakness of the overall business climate issues. Of course, these, these issues are not singular and owned by Guyana. They are issues that all private sector face in developed economies. Over the last few years, the private sector has helped propel the country to its highest level. So my first message to you this evening is that you are the protagonist of economic development of this country. You've done a good job, sometimes in challenging circumstances, but you must continue to play this role and strive to do even better. How to do better is something maybe you can maybe share a few ideas. You have to continue to lead the path in these first few domains. Growth, fixed investment, exports, job creations, adding value to the basic commodities produced, diversifying the economy, product of, of service and delivery, delivery innovation, adaptation of cleaner and more efficient technologies, green economy, LCDS. And this will allow the economy to expand, have a broader base of activities, be more resilient to shocks and increase income. And that's where the next step is. The IDB, the Inter-American Inter Development Bank, has been a long partner in Guyana's development and we will continue to be. We have an active, active portfolio in what we call the sovereign guarantee, the public side of our activities of $240 million, which we have about 100 million dispersing, not dispersed. I'm glad to say that we will be approving in the next two weeks 95 million in two sectors, water and energy, and including in those are 30 million euros, which is a grant from the EU, which we have represented here this evening. In our current, current, so this is important, so that 100 million will be going to 195 in the next two weeks. More pressure for dispersing and execution. Well, everybody's up to the task, government and us. 
in our current country and the private sector, because the private sector is the one executing the contract's goal. This is to buy services, to buy works. And those services and works are bought from government, from the private sector. In our current country strategy, uh, for those of you, and it's a public document that is found on our website, and the country strategy is a 2012-2016. Country strategies are documents that the bank um, crafts with government every time there's a new cycle of government. It's part of our way of working. We establish a work plan with the new government, which we did in 2012, and this one is going up to 2016. And for those of you, it's available online, you will notice that there are four main areas. Energy, sustainable energy, uh, natural resources, public sector support, and the one that is interest us this evening, private sector development. So it's one of our priority pillars, and we stand ready to assist and facilitate. We are often perceived as directing our assistance only to the public sector, but it's not the case. Even if we do more in public sector, I agree. In fact, we looked at our numbers a bit uh, when I was preparing for this, and we, we did realize, and we were very happy, and I think we need to do more digging, uh, that we had about 20 projects with the private sector since 1996. But we want to do more. So the challenges you face are many, and I will not reiterate that because you know them better than I do, much better, and you live with them day to day. What I prefer to do this evening is to share with you, in the opinion of the country office of the IDB, how we think the private sector could contribute to expand the economy and continue to do better, as we just mentioned. One of the, first, one of the sectors, we think, is public-private partnerships, clusters, and value chains. We all know that many investments are needed, roads, bridges, among many. But these works, these infrastructures, these factories, or radical, radical changes in productive technologies tend to be costly. We all know that, it's nothing new. Often the cost is beyond the reach of a government that has to worry about debt sustainability. And you do know that Guyana went through this crisis quite a while ago, and the debt sustainability is something that has been very well managed by the government of Guyana, and we need to stress that how the, this government has been extremely responsible, and this has been a, a, a big priority of the government. So this will be, uh, and it keeps on being a priority, so when we're looking at major works, the government is looking at this issue very closely. And I was saying, when the government worries about their sustainability, and individual entrepreneurs, companies, don't just have the sufficient capital to leverage this deal. So here is where joining forces and collaborating can help overcome an obstacle that seems insurmountable from an individual standpoint. Governments, in general, are interested and I think from what we've seen in the newspapers these last few days, we can say it's the case here, in promoting public-private partnerships, which are contracts from public authorities to private actors to provide public services, and where the private party shares a fair amount of the financial, te financial technical, and operational risks. PPPs are often used to fund infrastructure projects. The bank, we perceive PPPs as a legitimate instrument and we encourage internal and external private sectors actors to get involved. At another level, much can be done to form, strengthen, and promote joint ventures, clusters, and value chains. For example, just to give you one, where a standalone producer of coconut water, I'm just taking an example, may not be able to satisfy an export contract by banding together with other producers receiving training in quality assurance, engaging in, in joint marketing and joint purchase of expensive common inputs that they could not afford by themselves, and coordinating logistics, much more can be achieved. 